Hey everyone, uh, I'm just going to do a brief overview of Daggity, which is an online software that you can use to create DAGs or uh, causal diagrams. And that's something that you can also do in Word or PowerPoint, but there's a few advantages to using Daggity that I'm going to get to. And also um, the lecture on DAGs that I'm going to do on the first Wednesday after we get back to in-person classes is going to have an activity where I'm hoping that you guys are going to spend some time working on uh, a little daggity activity that we're going to take up in class. So I just thought I'd give you an overview of it. So um, all of your thinking power goes towards working out the problem rather than using daggity itself. So uh, you start by just going to whatever browser you use and looking up daggity. Uh, it's with one G and two T's, um, and it's going to be the first one that comes up, and um, you would just uh, click the launch one, and that's the one that lets you interact with it online. So the first thing I like to do is just kind of clear um, what they what they give you here, it just so it's just exposure and disease. So to clear a variable, you click on it, and then go over here to delete, and do that for the other ones. And now here's the first thing that's nice about uh, Daggity is when you move a variable, it keeps this path between any two variables intact. If you've ever tried to do this in Word or PowerPoint, you probably noticed that that's not always the case. And if there's a way you can do that in, in Word, definitely let me know. But yeah, it's definitely, an, for me, it's an advantage of, of Daggity. So, if we're going to rename these variables, so for this example I'm going to do, it's going to be smoking and a heart attack. You click on a variable and where we went to delete, you go to rename instead. And you would name it whatever you want. And that brings me to another point. Uh, when you click on a variable, you'll see that there's this area where exposure here is clicked, I can unclick exposure and then it's just a, a regular covariate. I can make it the outcome and I can make heart attack the exposure. Um, but yeah, for, for the time being, it's going to be uh, heart attack as, as the outcome and smoking as the exposure. Okay, so to create a variable, you double click anywhere in this gray space and I'm going to create cholesterol which, if you didn't know, is one of the main intermediates between smoking and heart attack. So because we're refining this causal relationship into smoking to cholesterol to heart attack, we have to eliminate this error we've created. And to eliminate that, we click on smoking and then click on heart attack. And uh, I know that arrow is there to begin with, so just another point to create an arrow, you click on a variable and then click on the one you want the arrow to go towards, and you do the exact same thing to get rid of what you just did. So for our purposes, we're going smoking to cholesterol and cholesterol to heart attack, and you'll notice that that turned blue, and that's because it's a covariate rather than just some gray unrelated variable. Um, and this green, uh, this green path here, based on the legend, means it's the causal path from our exposure of interest to outcome of interest. There's definitely situations where you're not going to have an exposure of interest, per se, like exploratory situations, but um, for the sake of um, this, th this example, let's just say smoking is our uh, exposure of interest. And just to throw a confounder in there, I'm going to put stress where stress might lead someone to smoke more than they already do. And stress can also lead to a heart attack. And you'll notice that turned pink. And pink means that it is an ancestor of both the exposure and the outcome. And some of this nomenclature I'm gonna to get to in the actual DAG lecture. Uh, the purpose of this little lecture isn't to teach you about DAGs, it's more just to teach you about um, or just to, to teach you about using Daggity. So yeah, this is this represents a confounder and it's got this scary pink path that means it is a biasing path based on this legend. And something cool that, um, th that this software lets you do is 
you'll notice that one of the options here is to where, where we were able to change it from exposure to outcome is to put adjusted and what adjusted means is we have adjusted for this confounding so there's a lot of ways you can do that you can say match individuals in both the smoking and not smoking group based on something like stress you you can include stress in the model and that permits you to isolate this causal path this unbiased causal path between smoking and heart attack which is pretty neat another thing we can do is say we are using data like some of you who are in your masters might be using ICES data and, and you might know that um, you might have variables you're interested in that you don't have access to so you can declare stress unobserved and that leaves it gray like this so we still know it's a confounding path but it's unobserved and that just lets us kind of have a placeholder for it in the model or, or in this causal diagram where um, we're able to um, consider it and and basically keep it in the model even though we we know we don't have access to that data and there's things we can do with that like bias analysis uh, but for the sake of this we're going to consider it adjusted um, so some cool things that uh, Daggety lets you do is it uh, tells you testable implications so this first testable implication is that smoking is independent of heart attack given that cholesterol and stress has been controlled. So if we control stress and cholesterol, um, we're able to test the implication that all of a sudden smoking has zero relationship with heart attack. There might be some relationship directly to heart attack, kind of like smoking is confounding cholesterol and heart attack. Um, and that's something that would be really valuable for, um, yeah, just, just being, being sure that all of our effect is of smoking is going through cholesterol. Um, another one that it would let us test is that uh, cholesterol is independent of stress given smoking. Uh, so cholesterol is independent of stress. Okay, so yeah, if we control smoking, we're able to test the implication that now cholesterol has no relationship with stress. We're able to test the idea that um, the only thing making these variables related is the fact that smoking is a mediator. And this software is particularly compatible with R, and I'm not someone who really uses R, but uh, if you if you use R, this, this might mean something to you that you're able to input these testable implications into R, and also it gives you code for the model which permits you to say, like if I if I call smoking the exposure and I say I'm, I'm adjusting, um, it will create model code that essentially like cre creates a model where stress is controlled for and smoking and heart attack is the relationship of interest, which is pretty neat. And yeah, that's basically everything I, I wanted to show you about Daggety. Um, for the assignment, hopefully, or not, sorry, it's not an assignment, it's it's an activity. Uh, for that activity, I think I, I would definitely not expect you to be able to do anything that I haven't shown you here. It's going to be really simple. Um, and yeah, most of the actual DAG learning is, is going to take place in that lecture. Um, basically, for, for this activity, I'm just hoping you to, to use what you know about causal diagrams and about stuff like confounding to kind of brainstorm some of these ideas that are hope that kind of expected to be maybe just kind of challenging to think about or you're not sure and that's kind of the whole point of my lecture is hopefully it's going to prove useful for you um so yeah i'll, I'll see you then